All right. All right. So in today's video. All right. All right. So in today's. All right. So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at this JBL. What is it? Link Ten. And apparently, my friends found out that I um, I can fix the ports on these. And uh, I mean, you guys seem to enjoy this content, so why the hell not? And so it's again a case of uh, micro USB being a piece of shit port. Um, let's see if we can zoom in. But part of the plastic has gone away, as often is the case, right? Uh, connectors do get crimped, and then when they do get forcibly inserted, uh, we'll chip away at this. All right, so apparently to uh, get to the charging port, we'll need to remove this rubber base. I've done a video uh, a couple of days ago on a Sony speaker and that was a pain in the ass to work on because it had a tremendous amount of boards. Everything came together in a complicated way. There were a bunch of plastic pieces holding everything together. All of them were separate. They at least had the same screw type every time, but I was extremely complicated. I know JBL for a fact has way more efficient designs. And uh, I would even say they pass the cost savings down to the consumer because for the same money JBLs usually, and I'm not even sure it's a matter of taste, right? They do sound better than what Sony offers bang for buck, right? Uh, of course, reliability is probably gonna be better with the Sonys uh, simply because they use better drivers, I would assume. Um, Right, the uh, JBL Charge 3, uh, all of those are doomed to die. Uh, video again up here. What happens in those is the uh, battery expands. No one thought of that ever happening. Simultaneously, they use the shittiest battery supplier on the planet. And literally all of them blow out their uh, one of these well, similar part, right, that holds on the battery. And then they start leaking and sound like shit. So you could basically go on uh, your eBay or whatever you have and uh, check for JBL Charge 3s and uh, you'll see that most of them are broken by now. Uh, mine has developed a different issue. It makes this kind of a rattly noise and I haven't been able to fix that. So I'm a bit upset on that front. But uh, yeah. All right. So we have a bunch of ribbons here. One for the LED, one for the data, and I think this is for the power. All right, so uh, so this is again low pressure, right? Not the airtight, and the airtight just gets uh, gets happening over here. So that is interesting. Might actually put some silicone over here just in case. But uh, yeah, this is a good design. I like this. All right, and this is a dead port uh, and the reset button. So let's uh, peel away the... And again, as I mentioned last time, one trick that we will definitely need to keep an eye out for is uh, actually bridging out the data pins, which are these two over here. You can see they're sneaking off. And um, yeah, definitely do not forget this. So let's see.
Okay, so I think the rightmost one is the positive. And it's sneaking along this fatty track over here. And uh, we'll assume that this is the ground and it is connected to the leftmost pin. Which it is. Okay, so <clears throat> that being said, I'll uh, just create some new pads to solder onto because the micro USB ones are just too small. Right, so I spawned these two new pads. Uh, let's uh, check if uh, everything, uh, this should be plus. This is pretty straightforward and this should be minus. And it is. Okay. Right, so same as last time, now it's a matter of uh, the uh, TC4056 lithium ion charging module. You can find these for, I don't know, about a dollar, probably even less. And uh, you want to get the Type C version, and that will give you a very solid port and a relatively thick board. Um, so, similar to last time, I'll uh, depopulate this so uh, when we go in with the Dremel, we don't vaporize. Uh, too big a quantity of plastic because uh, all right so uh, always when cutting PCBs I love using this uh, diamond disc which has been used and abused for a bunch of years by now uh, cuts perfectly uh, we're gonna cut into this dirty ass box and yeah, let's not forget the mask don't give COVID to this fucking board you guys should wear some uh, safety goggles as well, right? You never know what flies off of this. Okay. All right, so now I'll be adding some more solder to the edges of the connector. That'll make uh, sure it stays in there very firmly. I don't know how much that's going to help, but um, yeah, I'll sleep better at night. All right, so as per the findings of my past self, I know that uh, these two um, these two traces on the back are the plus and the rest is minus. So uh, let's just scratch this uh, thicker one. It's going to give us a good plus connection. And then for the minus, uh, we'll probably just bridge onto an existing solder blob. Okay. Now let's uh, prepare some wires. All right, so I got some food delivered, but I really want to finish this. So uh, <clears throat> let's uh, quickly finish, uh, finish wiring this up. Good enough for the girls I go out with. Let's, um... All right, and for my next trick, I will be converting the hole used for micro USB, which is, again, the biggest piece of shit known to man. Baby file time again. Uh, what I might do is uh, cut some grooves in here for the hot snot to uh, get a better grip on.
quick baby file time again. Alright, so I'm quite satisfied with uh, how this came out. This is still rather soft, but uh, actually, let's let's try it out now. All right, so quick change of plans. Uh, we'll have to chop off this entire bit. I uh, have this now glued. Okay, so let's uh, close this back together and see what happens. I have to say I'm a bit nervous about that reset. Mm. I uh, That reset button, I don't know, really hope it uh, doesn't need to be, doesn't need to be there physically, right? Because uh, it sure isn't. Okay, so no more reset. Yeah. Um, what I also want to do right quick is take off the grill. Usually this comes off from one side and uh, I don't want to clean it. Alright, so I'll give this a quick uh, rinse. And so this is how it looks now. And this is how it looks once it's rinsed over. So you can see all the grime has gone away. Alright, and once uh, once we're here, uh, these are the speakers on the Flip 10, and I would assume the Flip 20. And this is a Charge 3. So as you can see, I would imagine area-wise, these are twice as big. So even though the speakers are comparable-ish in size, this is going to sound way, way nicer. Uh, yeah, coming back, I think we could um, reconnect stuff up and then give it a go. Right, so as I've mentioned in the previous video, you cannot use Type-C to Type-C cables with this particular solution. Uh, you definitely need a Type-A to Type-C wire, such as this one. Right, and the reason for this is that uh, what we have done there does not speak over the uh, CC, over the channel, uh, over the channel configuration line. Uh, and this is how USB Type-C works, right? They have zero voltage, zero power on the main power line. There's an auxiliary five volt line, which you're not supposed to draw a current from. That is just supposed to wake up your device and then your device asks for a voltage and then the charger provides it. Right? With this, you always have 5 volts on, uh, on the type A socket and you can just force it down the type C connector. Right? But type C output chargers such as this one will not output anything all over the main power lines until asked for it so yeah that being said uh we could could give this a go <coughs> all right so let's see all right 
Hey, turn it on. Is this the on button? Oh, it is? Is it? How do you turn it on, though? I'll uh, put the cover back on. It just has uh, these uh, sort of circular pins holding it in. Nothing too spectacular. And uh, yeah, that'll be it. We had the manufacturing design work. And the design work that went into making this. Just look how nice this snapped back together. Absolutely perfectly. With the Sony, the thing had bulges and shit. It snapped in the middle. I was just so nicely engineered. Oh my God. All right, so that's been it. Uh, it's now fixed. As can be seen. As far as the drivers are concerned, nothing extremely exciting. Although, I've never seen a wireless speaker, a Bluetooth speaker, with an actual heat sink. Oh my god. This is crazy. <laughs> Again, very solid construction from uh, JBL. Battery must be somewhere in here, right? So... Very modular, right? Two sides. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's about it. So all uh, passives look really nice. Really, really nice. Yeah, this heatsink is fucking crazy. Why does it... I mean, how much processing does it do with the mics and shit? And is it for the amp? I don't think it's for the amp. I... See really don't know and if it's supposed to run off batteries like how hot was it getting that they decided to it, did it overheat if you spoke to google too much like okay google how's it going like what do you think about hegel i don't know like anyway what overheat or it's super weird i don't know